What's up, guys, and welcome to another edition of Pro Wrestling Pulse. I'm J-Man. On this edition of the Pulse, we're going to give you our TNA Turning Point 2012 preview coming this Sunday on pay-per-view. Um, looking forward to this show. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was really looking forward to this show when I saw the first couple matches announced for it. Um, and then this uh, edition of Impact this week kind of named the bottom of the card and a little sketchy. But um, definitely the top of this card and portions of the middle of it looking pretty solid here to uh, be an interesting pay-per-view going into the um, pay-per-view this Sunday. That sentence didn't make any sense, but we'll make it work. We're going to run down the card for the uh, first matchup. We have a tag team matchup here, intergender tag team matchup, uh, between the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, yes, that title is still around, uh, featuring ODB and Eric Young going up against the Knockouts Champion, Tara and Jesse. That's how we call them now. We just we call them Jesse, not just Jesse. Um, yeah, they just announced this on this past um, Impact. They had ODB um, defeat Tara um, on Impact in the singles matchup there. Um, and now having this intergender tag match that I don't really give a shit about. Um, having Eric Young come back in from uh, getting done fishing on his fishing show that I still haven't watched. Kind of intrigued to see it, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, and yeah, Jesse been, you know, flumping around like a big freaking homo, looking like a just look gay as hell. Um, coming in from uh, Big Brother, yeah, because everyone knows him. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with ODB and Eric Young getting the win here. I don't know. These first two matches, you can really just flip-flop. I really have no idea who's going to win, but I'll go with the ODB and Eric Young. Probably Tara and, you know, Jesse will probably win just because I'm picking him, but yeah. Uh, once again, it'll be a matchup featuring knockouts, so the only thing I'll care about is the referee, Taryn Terrell. Yes. Fan-fucking-tastic. Next matchup, we have Joseph Park. God damn, I wish I had Ryan here for this one. Joseph Park going up against Doc from Aces and Eights. Um, yeah, Doc um, stands for Director of Chaos. He is the Director of Chaos for the Aces and Eights. All right, here, let's see what we can do with this one. Um, just first off, whoever thought of this, just how, how the hell do they have a job? Because that's just, that's fucking, it's just atrocious. It's so fucking bad. Director of Chaos, like, just, that, and that we need to make sure we clarify that we're not going to get Director of Chaos confused with Professor Chaos. Um, obviously from South Park, because Butters has that shit on lockdown. Um, don't be, don't be fucking with Professor Chaos. Um, I'm going to automatically just constantly think of Back to the Future anytime I hear this guy, because when I hear Doc, I don't think Doctor. I think, obviously, Doc from, um, Back to the Future. Um, and he's, yeah, so we have, and he's also, it's Luke Gallows. Um, he got unveiled, um, two weeks ago as being Doc, the director of chaos. You know, we have the, this, this soldier or sergeant at arms, or whatever the hell d -Von is or whatever. I was fine with that, you know, that's, that's cool. We're gonna have these kind of like badass, you know, biker gang, like fucking authoritative name figures and shit. So we have, we have Doc, the director of chaos. And you know, in Aces and Aces, you, you need some, you need some directing of chaos because it, it's, it's chaos. I'll just stop because I mean, we'll probably just, We'll shit on it some more on the review. I'll save it for that. But just, come on, Doc. That's fucking atrocious. Um, yeah, um, Doc and Joseph Park in a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. Um, like I said with the first one, it's kind of hard to pick who's going to win here. They're, they're wanting Doc um, to, to kind of make a name for himself in Aces and Eights and be that authoritative figure um, because he's, you know, one of the only two guys without a mask on. So, you know, people without masks on are authoritative figures in Aces and Eights. That's what they're telling us. Um, I'll go with Doc getting the win here. I don't know. Maybe Joseph Park wins. We see some Abyss shit maybe finally going to happen because I'm really done with seeing anything related with Joseph Park. I, I was done a couple months ago when they, you know, started it, I guess. Uh, but I'll go with Doc getting the win here. Um, fire up the DeLorean, you know. Let's, 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 let's go back to the future here. Um, yeah, that, that should be tremendous. Next matchup. We have the X Division title on the line when champion Rob Van Dam goes up against Joey Ryan. Um, intriguing matchup here. Should be a pretty interesting match as well. Um, and I'm actually going to go with Joey Ryan getting the win this match. Um, when they put the title on Rob Van Dam, it, it really, it was, it, it was just, it's nonsense. It, there, there's no reason for it. RVD's just roaming around doing jack shit in TNA right now. So like, hey, we'll give you the X title. No reason for that. There's a reason to give Joey Ryan the X title. He's the hot new guy coming in. He's got that random shit going on with Matt Morgan and Hulk Hogan, and he's doing this and that. You know, put 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 the X title on him. Who gives a shit? Um, where's Kenny King at? That's what I want to know. The whole X Division thing going on here with 
RVD randomly having the title. Where the fuck did Kenny King go? Um, anyway, I'm gonna go with Joey Ryan, as I said, get, get the title here. Just just put it on some something that makes sense. I mean, it just RVD doesn't make any sense holding it. It's just it's just so blah. Every time I see RVD, it's just it's just fucking blah. It's not blah when I see Joey Ryan. He's, he's entertaining. I think would be would make for a good X Division champion. Next matchup. With an ODQ match for the TNA Television Championship featuring champion Samoa Joe going up against Magnus. Um, this is going to be the start of something I really wanted to make a mention about with TNA and how everything is seeming to be on the up and up with TNA right now. The pay-per-view quality, the, you know, the match quality on impacts, everything here and there has been on the up and up. One of the big things that, I, that I've been noticing is just their development and their just overall interest in you know, making feuds and continuing feuds and building feuds. Um, that's something they did not focus on, you know, a year ago when it was just in the doldrums. Here you go, Ryan, there's another use of doldrums for you. Um, because it was just garbage. They would just go from nonsensical match to nonsensical match at every pay-per-view where they just make made of it matches or other matches that didn't make any sense and they wouldn't build anything about it and they wouldn't have anything that would carry over from pay-per-view to pay-per-view or week to week or month to month or whatever it was. Um, they just throw random shit together. This and a lot of the other things that I'm going to mention at the, at the end of this card is, you know, formed together at least where you have some feuds, you have some things carrying over, you have, you know, to where you have a singles match, then you end up having a, a stipulation on the next match where you kind of have that, that kind of, not really old school, but that traditional way to build a feud where you want to, you know, start adding to it, you add some stipulations to it, you add some gimmicks to it, whatever it is. Um, that's what they done here, that, you know, making no DQ match had Magnus attack Joe in the back or something and Joe got all pissed and... Joe's going to kill you. Um, so we have this no DQ match up here, and I, I'm pretty interested in it. As I said, they've, they've built it up, and it's somebody who I'm hella interested in, in Samoa Joe, and I have always been, and somebody who I'm really not too, I don't really care too much about Magnus, but he's, you know, building himself up a little bit here. But um, I'm going to go with Samoa Joe getting, getting the victory here. I think, it's, I think it's a really good move to keep the TV title on. I thought it was a good move to give him the TV title, because at least they finally found somebody that's that's worthwhile to be a champion especially i mean he's worthwhile to be a lot better champion than, than just the tv you know championship but um you know keep it on joe and you know everybody loves some old joe we've said it a million times the crowd eats it up every time that they see joe and you know keep feeding it to him um because that's that's what a lot of people want they want to see some go out there and just kick people's asses because that's that's what he does and I'm, i look for a pretty intriguing matchup here um for the tv title and i hope joe keeps it because that would make a lot of sense Next matchup, we have a singles matchup between Kurt Angle and Devon, the sergeant at arms or whatever the hell they wanted to call him, of the Aces and Eights. Um, I, what the hell is this? I just talked about how building up feuds made sense, but this 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 is not what they needed to do right here. This was a hundred percent guaranteed lock it up a Bully Ray Devon match, and they they did what they did on Impact a couple weeks ago with the match that ended in, in all of TNA and Aces and Eights kind of battling and doing all that kind of shit. This this was so set up to be to start that, you know, probably long drawn out feud that they're gonna end up doing with Bully Ray and Devon. Uh, but they're not doing it here. They're kinda throwing Kurt Angle in because they couldn't find a spot for Kurt Angle, but they need him on the card. But yet Bully Ray's not on the card, which is just asinine to not put him in the card. This easy fix. Here you go. Get your little racer out. Race Kurt Angle's name on this match, right over Bully Ray's name, add a stipulation to this match, street fight, last man's I don't really give a shit, because it needs a stipulation on it, it makes a lot of sense. And then go down and then write four-way on the triple threat number one contenders match and put Kurt Angle in that one. Because you don't have to have him get pinned. You to, you know, whatever's going to happen in that. Obviously, I'll get to that later with the number one contenders match. Put him in a four-way. He's still got him on the card. It makes sense because he's connected to the people in there. He was tagging with AJ. He's had tons of history with Storm and Rude as well. Makes a ton of sense. This doesn't make any sense. Put Bully Ray in this match. Put a stipulation on it. It would be fantastic. Do that. I, I love their their chemistry they had in that promo. Oh, chemistry. They're you know one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Of course they got chemistry at the Wazoo. Making no sense with that one. But yeah, put Bully Ray in this matchup. It made total sense. I don't know how the hell he's not on this card. No sense to me there. But I, I, if so, the only way I'm going to think out of getting to this is um, maybe they want to reveal Wes Briscoe. They've had Wes Briscoe obviously. As a member of the Aces and Eights, he's the long-haired blonde guy, for any of you guys who don't know that. Um, with the mask on, obviously, he's a long-haired blonde guy in all everyday life as well. Um, but yeah, he's been obviously connected to Angle, doing that sort of backstage stuff. This could be the final reveal for Wes Briscoe here. Would make a lot of sense. And, you know, maybe give Devon the win here. I, I'll, I'll pick Devon, maybe a Wes Briscoe run in and, you know, finally revealing himself as being a member of Aces and Eights. Would make a lot of sense to do that, so I'll go with Devon get the win there. But that's 
just lock solid. That should have been fully ready to on right there, but we're not going to see that. We'll probably see it in the future. Unfortunate kind of misuse of matchmaking there, but what are you going to do? Next matchup, we have the teenage tag titles on the line. One champion, Chava Guerrero and Hernandez, go up against the fallen of Christopher Daniels and Kaz. Um, just team entertainment, because they're just hella entertaining. Um, and Chava Guerrero and Hernandez, as Daniels and Kaz called it, I think it was, it was, it was, uh, it was Los fucking... What the fuck was his name? It was, uh, I can't even think of it off the top of my head. It was something fucking random. It was funny, and I can't think of it. I'll probably think of it here in a minute. But we have Chavo and Hernandez going up against Daniels and Kaz. Uh, Los Stereotypicos, I think it was. Or El Stereotyp, some shit like that. Stereotypicos. I don't know, because it's Mexican tag team. It was pretty funny when I heard that. Uh, we have Chavo and Hernandez going up against Daniels and Kaz. Um, I look for this one to be a, pretty, be a pretty good one. And we had... As I said, with with the feuds building up, we had Daniels and Kaz, you know, you know, with the championships, and then we had uh, Chavo and Hernandez uh, win the titles back at Bound for Glory, and now you have the rematch set up here. Makes sense, you know, just throw a nonsensical tag team in there, Chavo and Hernandez that hasn't gotten a shot back at the tag titles like Daniels and Kaz should, and that's what you got here. Um, Chavo and Hernandez looked outstanding on uh, this past Impact and that six man they were. Hernandez looking like a fucking monster. Um, as he normally does, and Danielson Cass looking outstanding as they have been, you know, throughout their entire tag run. Uh, but yeah, as I, I see this being a pretty solid little tag match here, uh, tag match up here that we've seen as of late on their on their pay per views, and I'm gonna go with Chavo and Hernandez retaining the championships in that matchup there. Next matchup, we have number one contenders triple threat match for the TNA World Title match at Final Resolution next month, and whoever gets pinned in this matchup will not receive a TNA World title shot until next year's Bound for Glory. So you got to almost wait an entire year for another title shot here uh, with these amazing names in this matchup. We have the phenomenal AJ Styles, the Cowboy James Storm, and the It Factor professional wrestling Bobby Roode. Um, you just want to throw TNA on a platter and just here you go. Here's a little triple threat TNA love fest. That this is exactly what you throw on here. you got two you know, day oneers in AJ and Storm, and you got a damn near day oneer in... Um, Bobby Roode. This is fantastic. I am so looking forward to this matchup as a lot of people that know me and know my love for obviously AJ and all these other guys in here is fantastic. The only thing I do want to say is I'm always keen to what AJ Styles is doing, always have been. Um, they need to find something for AJ to do because he's just doing nothing right now. We had that bullshit just excuse for a storyline with that shit. I don't even want to mention her name. It was just terrible. They should have never done that. Um, with AJ, it was just garbage and Daniels and Kaz and making some great tag matches out of that, but just a garbage storyline. They need to get AJ back in the hunt for the world championship and stop fucking around doing stupid shit with him because you don't, in my opinion, AJ Styles is the best in ring performer in the world today. Um, I think CM Punk is obviously the best in the world, but I think in ring performer, you put a guy um, in the middle of the squared circle, AJ Styles is the best. And I think he has been for a very long time. And everybody around and all the guys on the Ferocious Impulse, they, they hear from me all the time. But you're going to get it here as well. Um, obviously, we have the buildup, as I said, with the feuds again. You got Storm and Rude back in here. You got AJ, who's obviously connected to all this with being in the main event kind of title hunt for the last couple of years. Um, which would have made so much sense putting Kurt Angle in this match. If you wanted him on the card, ah, never mind. I'll keep pitching about that. But I'm going to go with James Storm getting the win. Um, in this matchup, the new number one contender um, going to face champion at Final Resolution, and I see him pinning Bobby Roode in this matchup. Um, I know AJ probably won't even get a title shot, even if he fucking doesn't get pinned. They just won't do it anymore for some fucking reason. Um, but James Storm is definitely the guy they keep throwing at you. They're like, eventually he's going to get the title back after that one-week title run he had back last year after Bound for Glory. He's going to eventually get it again. Um, and he's that guy they're kind of moving forward if they end up doing with something with Storm and Hardy or whatever the hell happens in the long run. But I see James Storm getting the win this match, pinning Bobby Roode in an outstanding matchup. I think this one will be the one, uh, be one of the ones that we definitely talk about. This one and obviously the main event. Um, that's why they really, the last couple of weeks ago, we were so looking forward to this with the, the announcement of these two uh, final matches here, which looks outstanding. These You throw these three guys in the ring, you're not going to get anything but just outstanding production out of these guys every single time. But I'm going to go James Storm. The new number one contender in that match up there. Next match up, we have the main event. It's the ladder match for the TNA World Championship featuring champion Jeffrey Nero Hardy going up against A Double Austin Aries, um, the former world champion, losing his championship at TNA Bound for Glory last uh, month. Um, still carrying around the real TNA World Championship because he the, the poor excuse for Jeff Hardy's title. Jeff Hardy. Uh, what, is, what is the reason why they always got to make Jeff Hardy so... It's, it's always Jeff Hardy-driven, so fucking special. It's just the same thing Austin Aries always talks about. 
He gets a new song. He gets a new goofy, stupid Transformers-looking fucking title like he had back last year. He, he's got his dumbass title back again, which Austin Aries wants to melt down into a belt buckle and have Jeff Hardy's face near his crotch, as he said, which was fantastic promo. That was fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to this one. The, as I said, these last two matches, I am pumped as hell for because they just look outstanding. And adding the ladder match stipulation in there, that's Jeff Hardy's element. And Austin Aries succeeds in any element you throw him in. He's so versatile and just that hybrid the way that Austin Aries is. You can throw him in any situation. He's going to thrive anywhere and throw him in a ladder match. Duh, it's going to be fucking outstanding. Um, and as I said, Jeff Hardy in that element, you know, that's what he made his name about. And that's, that's how it's Austin Aries has said in the uh, other promo, he's going to go down as quite possibly one of the biggest daredevils and best daredevils in the history of professional wrestling. And that's, that's where he thrives and he thrives in these matches. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Should be some great stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to unfortunately go with Jeff Hardy retaining the championship here. Would obviously love to see Austin Aries win it back, but... Um, the only thing that's scaring me here um, is as soon as I saw him, because I, I knew it was the point Blake going to be, um, you know, Jeff Hardy getting the championship at Bound for Glory and Austin Aries losing it, I didn't want, you know, have that fall off. You know, we've seen it time and time before with amazing talent that get up there and they, and they use them because they're so great. And then after that, they're like, ah, we'll just throw you to the side. And you don't throw Austin Aries to the side and he won't let you throw him to the side because it's just, it's a stupid move. Um, he's just one of the best in your company and has been since the day he came in, which we all said. The Austin Aries will get to the top. If you give him the, the time of day and let him go out there and do what he's going to do, he's going to become one of the best performers in your company. That's just that's what he's always done. Um, so, yeah, don't throw him to the side here. If you want to continue a feud, as I said, again, bringing in the feuds. That's what they did here. If you want to continue going out in the long run, do that. Don't get him out of the, the title situation. Don't get him out of the limelight because that's what he needs to be and that's where he thrives at. But... I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy, retaining the championship here in this ladder match, which should be an outstanding matchup there, and hopefully an outstanding pay-per-view. Uh, we'll see what ends up coming out of this, and the kind of lower card stuff hopefully can form up to some interesting things, but the, the, obviously the top of this card looks outstanding and hopefully can deliver Sunday for this pay-per-view. And this will now wrap up our TNA Turning Point 2012 preview. Be sure to check out our review after the pay-per-view Sunday. I'm Jay Man, and thank you for watching another edition Pro Wrestling Pulse, the pulse of the professional wrestling world.